Welcome back to week five of Bake Angel Takes on the Great British Bake Off. It's dessert week, so fingers crossed we get a really nice recipe to try this week. Let's see what they've set for us in this week's technical challenge. For your technical challenge, Prue would like you each to make a lemon meringue pie. Okay, so I'm really excited about this challenge. It's actually a very classic British dessert and I've never actually eaten or made lemon meringue pie before. So I'm really excited for this one. Let's dive in, take a look at the process and we'll see what tips we pick up along the way. So we're gonna start straight away by making the pastry base for the lemon meringue pie. And I'm gonna change the recipe ever so slightly to make sure that I'm doing a dairy-free version here. So the first thing you're gonna do is take 200 grams of all-purpose flour with a pinch of salt and then crumble 150 grams of unsalted cold butter to it. Now once you have that kind of breadcrumb consistency, you're then gonna add 25 grams of icing sugar to it and finally add one beaten egg which will just bind everything together really nicely mix it together with your hands until it starts to clump together and then you're just gonna flour a surface and knead it slightly so that it comes into a rough ball of dough now we need this to be workable and uh, one thing I will mention as well, if it's particularly warm when you're doing this, you may need to put a little bit of extra flour in it because I did find that the dough itself was quite sticky. Now I decided to actually make mini lemon meringue pies instead of the large one like they made in the tent. So here you can see that I'm just going ahead and portioning up that dough into four equally sized portions. I'm just rolling them up roughly into rounds. Now they don't have to be perfect here. Then I'm gonna roll each of them out in between parchment paper. And this is a really good tip to stop everything sticking to the rolling pin when you're rolling. And it keeps everything nice and smooth as well. So you'll see I'm just using some paint stirrers on the side there to give me the even depth of the dough. And then I just size it up against the mini tart pan that I'm gonna be using today. These are the cutest pans as well. And if you don't have anything like this, just check the link in the description below where you can pick them up from Amazon. Now I'm just shaping the dough into that little tart case using my fingers lightly to press it into place. Make sure it's against the sides as well. And then you're just gonna cut off the excess with a knife, roll that up and we can keep that to use for something else. The next stage then to help that dough just settle a little bit is pop them on a baking tray and we're gonna chill them in the fridge for about 30 minutes. You could also pop them in the freezer instead if you wanted to speed up this process. I would recommend freezing them for about 15 minutes. Now we have the most important stage that I always recommend you don't skip whenever you're making a pastry base for a tart. And this is called blind baking. Now blind baking is the process of actually cooking off that pastry dough without you ending up with a soggy bottom, which could actually really spoil the consistency of the pie when you eat it. And all you're gonna do is pop a little bit of parchment paper on each of those tart cases and add something like baking beans or even rice to it. And that's actually just gonna help press it down a little bit so it doesn't expand, it will retain its shape and just cook off that flour that's in the dough. So again, it will retain a nice firm bottom when it bakes with the pie filling in it. Pop these in the oven then to bake them for 15 minutes. And while that's doing, we're gonna go on to making our lemon pie filling. So you can see here that I've got six lemons and I've just been removing the zest from them with this handy little tool that I have. Now, if you don't have something like this, you could use a grater as well, but I do recommend using a microplane because you'll actually get a lot more zest off of your lemons than if you use just a regular grater. And be careful when you do use them because they are really, really sharp as well, but definitely worth it. You can see we have a great amount of lemon zest here. The next thing we need to do is juice them and I'm using this handy gadget that you actually put inside of the lemon and you turn it upside down and squeeze and all that lovely juice comes out. 
Now, sometimes you'll find with this that occasionally the seeds will actually come through or a little bit of the sort of pith from the lemon as well. So I always recommend when you're making something that's nice and smooth like a pie filling that you just run it through a small strainer just to remove any of those seeds and bits. As you can see here, we have quite a few from the six lemons that we juiced. Perfect, so we've got our lemon juice and our lemon rind ready. Now we can go ahead and take our baking tarts out of the oven. So they've completed the blind baking stage. Here now we're gonna very carefully remove that parchment paper and the baking beads as well. Now they can be quite hot when you do this. So this is why I recommend you make sure your parchment paper is bigger than the tin because as you can see here, it's really easy to remove them. So just take your time, carefully pick up the corners of that parchment paper and you can see what the tart cases look like already. So they have slightly goldened a little bit, um, but not overly so because they were actually covered by that parchment paper. So it's kept everything a little bit paler than if you'd have baked it without the parchment paper on it. And they've started to firm up just a little touch as well. Then we're going to pop them back in the oven and just finish them off for another five to ten minutes until they look like this. Now you can see they haven't really puffed up at all. They are a little bit golden again, but now we need to go on and start the second stage for our pie fill-in. So to make our lemon pie fill-in, there's actually quite a few ingredients that we're going to use here. This is a dairy-free recipe as well. There are a lot of eggs used in it, so I didn't want to make this a vegan recipe. And I started off by mixing together the lemon juice, the lemon zest, and a little bit of corn flour as well, and stirring that together until it is nice and smooth. Now the corn flour is gonna help to actually thicken up the lemon pie filling once we get to that stage. Now I'm just gonna leave that for a moment while we start to heat a few things up. So I've just added 150 ml of smooth orange juice some water as well into my saucepan and that's going to start to heat up while I add six egg yolks and 250 grams of sugar into a separate bowl. Now again you can see on the right our orange juice and water is boiling then we're going to add that mixture of the lemon juice, lemon zest and corn flour to it and we're going to let that come back up to heat as well. Give it a really good stir too. We want to make sure that nothing sort of curdles or burns at all. So you want to keep that mixture moving because it will heat up and thicken up very quickly as you can see here. Notice that it is starting to thicken up already and it coats the back of my spoon really, really nicely. And once you're at that stage, we're actually going to quickly combine those egg yolks with our white sugar and then you're gonna pour that hot lemon mixture into it. Now importantly here, you wanna stir that straight away because obviously we've had it hot ingredients into an egg mixture. So you wanna make sure you don't end up with any sort of scrambled eggs here. And then very quickly pour that back into your hot saucepan and just bring it up to a hot temperature again whilst it thickens up even more. So in the recipe, they refer to this as a thick custard consistency, and you'll see it really doesn't take that long for it to get to that stage as all of the ingredients were hot already from being on the stovetop. So I'm just giving it a quick stir with my wooden spoon. Then finally, we will be removing this from the heat and we're gonna let it cool a little bit before we add it to our tart cases. So to speed up that cooling process, we're actually just gonna pour it quickly into another bowl and that will help it just firm up a little bit more as well and cool it down a lot quicker for us. So now we've got our cooled tart bases ready, or I suppose I should call them pie cases here. And then you're just gonna spoon your lovely lemon filling into it. Now it's entirely up to you how much you add to this. And what I found having never baked these before, I didn't know whether it was actually gonna expand at all, whether it would run over the side. So I probably didn't put as much in as I could have, um, especially because the sides of our 
pie case does have a little bit of a lip on it too so I probably could have put a little bit extra in but as you can see we have a lot of lemon fill in here so if I was going to make this again and follow the recipe I think I would actually reduce the lemon fill in recipe by half unless I intended on using this for something else. Give them a quick shake to level everything out and then we can go on to the next stage of making our meringue. And this is a very traditional meringue recipe. We're starting off with six egg whites. To that, I'm actually adding three teaspoons of lemon juice, and you're just gonna give them a quick whisk together until they form soft peaks. Now, a little bit of advice here. In the recipe, they actually asked that you use a half teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now, we didn't have any of that, and that's why I actually decided to use the lemon juice instead. And a little bit of research showed me that you use half a teaspoon for every egg white in the recipe. So that's why we use three teaspoons of lemon juice instead of the cream of tartar. Now, once you've got that soft peak stage, you're gonna start to add in your white sugar, which is 300 grams of sugar here. And you're just gonna add a spoonful at a time whilst the meringue is continuously whisking. Now, this is the really important stage because you want that meringue to gain a lot of air very quickly and we also want to make sure that we're not dumping all the sugar in at one go because it will actually deflate it as well so this method of a little bit at a time takes longer of course but it actually results in a much better meringue at the end so that's the rest of our sugar added. Now you can already tell that that meringue is starting to thicken up nicely as well. We are gonna stop the mixer shortly and just have a quick look at the thickness of it because we do wanna make sure that it holds a stiff peak rather than it bending over a little bit. So let's take a quick look. You can see that it does bend over just a tiny bit. So I think what we'll do, because it's still a little on the soft side, is we'll just give it another mix for a couple of minutes. And let's have one look at this. I think that looks much, much better this time. It is holding its peaks a lot better. So that's perfect. Our meringue is done and we can finally add it to our pie filling. And for this, I'm just taking dollops of the meringue and letting them fall on top of that pie filling. And then what I'll actually do is just use the edge of the spoon to kind of tease it towards the edge of the pastry as well. And you wanna kind of retain a little bit of a dome shape to it so that when it bakes, it gives that really nice look that a lemon meringue pie would have. You can also use your spoon as well to smooth it around, create swirl shapes if you wanted to. But if you're feeling even really fancy with this, you could of course pipe the meringue on top as well. But I was just kind of following the techniques that the bakers used in the tent and I just used the spoon method instead. Now, whilst I am finishing these, I should mention that our oven had been preheated to 265 degrees Fahrenheit. That's with a fan assist oven, which is about 130 degrees Celsius or 150 if you don't have a fan oven. We're going to pop those in the oven then once all of them are covered and we're going to bake them for about 15 minutes. And so I actually ended up keeping mine in the oven for quite a bit longer because they didn't seem to be baking all that well. So this is what they looked like after, I think it was about 27 minutes in total. They did actually get a little bit of a nice brown color to them and they're quite firm on top as well. I think any longer and they probably would have started to crack even more, but they look pretty good for my very first attempt at lemon rang pies. And now the final thing is for us to just take one of them out of its pie case, pop it on a plate and have a look at what it looks like inside. Now to do this, because these cases have a loose bottom, it is just as simple as carefully holding it in one hand and pushing the underneath with your other hand so you can get that ring off and then sliding it off the base as well. And I forgot to mention earlier as well, I didn't actually grease the pie cases because I know that the pastry will actually release itself as it bakes. 
So in our final cut here, you can see I definitely overcooked them a little bit there because the top is quite firm, but actually I kind of like that for meringues. Let me know in the comments what you think as far as meringues, whether it should be hard on top or not. But there is a nice look inside with the whiteness of that meringue against the yellow of the pie filling as well. And I think all in all for my very first attempt, I'm actually kind of impressed with how they turned out. Okay, so it's time for the all-important taste test. Now, like I said, I have never tried one of these before. I have high hopes so because I really do like anything that's got lemon in it. Uh, let's have a look at the slice that we just made. Really nice ratio here of the base and the lemon filling and the meringue as well. Um, what you'll see though is I actually overcooked it a little bit because this is a little bit harder than it should be. But there is still a little bit of a nice jiggle to the lemon filling itself. Let's have a taste. Wow, that's really sharp actually, but honestly, such a good refreshing taste. Um, I can see why a lot of people really like this. So I think all in all, it was a really good technical to do for this recipe. I think I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. It was really fun to make. We did have a lot of extra filling, like I mentioned earlier, but other than that, it really was a great technical challenge this week. So thanks ever so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this week's episode, if you're a fan of lemon meringue pie as well, and if you're going to have a go at making the recipe. Now, as always, I'll share my version of the recipe on bakeangel.com so you can get an allergy friendly version. And other than that, I look forward to seeing you in the next technical challenge. Thanks for watching. Bye.